Welcome to some new r slash petty revenge stories, where we share stories of small victories over those that wronged us. I hope you had a great day. But first, thank you for subscribing to the channel and for all those likes. Today we have 4 great stories, so let's get right into them, shall we? The first story is called Offer Up Revenge. I've always been a Craigslist guy, but I've moved somewhere where Craigslist isn't popular and it's all about offer up. Dealing with people on offer up is a really bad experience. I had accumulated a whole lot of pent up bitterness at the countless people that have ghosted me, wasted my time or showed up with less money than agreed upon. Or the onslaught of low ballers, people that can't make up their mind about selling their own item, liars, low ballers as they are handing me their agreed upon money, etc. My second to most recent exchange was me driving out 30 minutes to buy a laptop, waiting at a Starbucks and the guy telling me that the laptop wasn't done factory resetting. I was waiting for him for hours while I did my shopping and then he finally just ghosted me. I told him, if I were you, I would delete my account and take down all the listings. I then logged onto an old account a day later and changed my name to Anton Shigo and messaged him about an item he had for sale. He told me yes, it was available. Then I asked him, what's the most you've ever lost in a coin toss? He then left me on red and then a day later his account was gone or he blocked me, I don't know. But this wasn't the most recent event. Two months later I found myself short on rent and conveniently somebody messaged me that morning about a VR headset I had for sale. I was like, ah yes, this is perfect because he seemed like a serious buyer. We were messaging back and forth all morning, asking me questions about the headset, even planned to drive out to him 30 minutes so we could meet somewhere that was closer and more convenient to him. I asked what time we could meet. I'm available now. He said he was at school, but he let me know when he's on his way driving to our meetup location. I asked if he could at least give me an ETA so I can plan my day out. He leaves me on red. Three hours go by and I realize this guy is full of crap. So I log onto an old account and message him about an item he has for sale. Immediately he responds, saying it's available. Alright, cool, I've got him nibbling on the bait. I asked if we could meet in a couple of hours, but asked if he could drive to me, cause I don't have a car. I choose a fake location in a suburban neighborhood about 30 minutes drive from him. Initially he leaves me on red, but then I asked him if he'll do it for an extra $30. He immediately responds yes. Alright, so I got this guy on the hook. I go about my day. Oh, and a nice surprise, my check ended up clearing at the bank, so I don't have to worry about being short on rent anymore. I'm at the bank when I get a message from him saying he's on his way. 30 minutes later, he tells me he's outside the address I gave him, 123 WF Street. I waste his time by telling him I don't see him, and oops I gave the wrong address, it's only a block array at 456 WF Street. I take my time before checking again and there's a message saying he's been waiting a few minutes at the correct address. I tell him, do you know what the F in WF Street stands for? He says, uh, fourth, fourth street? And I say, F stands for F you. Next time think twice before wasting people's time. Would it have taken much effort to at least send a message saying, sorry I'm no longer interested? You're not the main character, people have lives. He responds, what? And then I block him and I block him from my main account too. That was such a satisfying moment. All the pent up bitterness from all the crap I've dealt with from the scum of offer up just released at once. Hope he thinks twice before doing that again. The next story is called Just Following the Rules. As a poor college student in the 90s, I had a Felswago checking account. It had a minimum average daily balance requirement of $500, which was always a struggle to maintain. If I couldn't maintain $500, I got hit with a $7.50 fee. On the last day of the month, I realized that I was a little shy of that $500 average balance. So I borrowed some cash from my buddy and went to the ATM and deposited it after class to bring up the account. A few days later, I got hit with a $7.50 fee. I called Wells Fargo and explained that I had deposited cash on the last day of the month. Turns out there's a cutoff at 5pm or something. I'd missed it, so the deposit didn't count for that day and I had an average balance of something like $4.98. I asked as a courtesy to credit that 750 back, but nope, Wells Fargo didn't budge. I read the account agreement. Yep, I missed the deadline, but $7.50 was like enough food for a couple of days when you're surviving on ramen, peanut butter and day old bagels, free for a dollar down the street. I was mad at myself, but also upset that I couldn't get a one-time fee reversal. It's not like they lost money because I made their deposit a few hours late. So I've been doing petty revenge ever since, even though they were just following rules that I agreed to. 
I justify my petty behavior because I'm doing a sort of petty justice by opening up accounts at Wells Fargo, which is what they did not too long ago to their customers to boost their numbers for Wall Street, open up accounts for customers without asking. I open accounts and credit cards for the sign up bonuses, usually keeping the bank accounts open for a year before closing them. These days I do direct deposits to avoid monthly fees and keep $0 in the account. The direct deposit goes in every other Friday. I send the money out to another account or pay bills the same day, so they have my money for just a few hours. Since 2017 I got free credit card bonuses. $200 twice, $300 for my wife and have kept their accounts open. No need to close those. I also opened 4 checkings or saving accounts. 150 in 2017, 200 in 2018, 400 in 2020. And this week I opened another checking account for another $400. That's $2,150 since 2017. I'm almost at $4,000 in bonuses since I started this about two decades ago. I do bonuses at other banks, credit card companies and brokerages. But the one that I really focus on and take special pleasure in is Wells Fargo. The third story is called Revenge 4 Years in the Making. So this story took place a few days ago. I work in real estate promotion. I had to send a letter to another company, telling them that we'll have to delay a signature of a very important contract because one of the suspensive conditions of the contract wasn't done yet. So if we would have signed it now, the other company could have disregarded its commitments. So I prepared a letter, signed it and was ready to post it when my boss came to my office, asking who was the recipient. I told him company X and then he asked me who on that company, so I told him the name of the person. After that he told me to wait two days to send a letter. Two days later I told him I'm going to post it. He told me read the contract between our companies again and come back with another letter. So I do it and see that they didn't follow an important part of the contract regarding the transmission of information within the required deadlines. I then make another letter, informing them that we'll have to make another contract in order to fulfill the big contract and send it to my boss for validation. He takes the letter and tears it down, telling me to write a new one a disrespectful one, telling them that they now have to pay three times what was on the original contract. So I do it and send one of the dirtiest letters I ever sent to a competitor. I got a call that day that the competitor's girl received it and she was crying because her boss now wants to fire her for missing deadlines. The petty revenge explained. Yesterday my boss took me to a restaurant for lunch because I told him I did not appreciate the way he asked me to do the thing. He told me that he didn't mean to do that until I have said the name of the person I was sending the letter to. Turns out he worked with this girl and one day she said to him that she worked with the ugliest girl she ever encountered. He said that she used the term ogress and when he asked for her name it was his fiance back then, now his wife. So my boss used me to fulfill a 4 year old petty revenge. The last story is called He was a legend. When I was in my late teens I used to hang out down at the pub a lot. It was a really sociable place where a lot of my friends would get together every weekend. It was the best spot for all the young alternative types and myself and many others had been going there since before we were 18. This was about 15 years ago. The landlord of this pub was awesome. A really nice dude who was welcoming and friendly but also took zero crap. Now he knew a lot of us were underage when we began drinking there but would only kick out the people that caused trouble. If you were sensible you could stay. Back then I had this friend Lucinda, we were really close once, I would have done anything for her. But she had a habit of lying and attention seeking. We fell out hard when she slept with a guy I was seeing at the time. I sacked him off too and I finally realized how little she really cared about me. There was also a girl, Leanne, a few years older than us, who for a short time would verbally attack me in public for no good reason. I later found out her boyfriend who I had a passing friendship with had been telling her that he made out with me which was a lie. I have no idea why I was being dragged into it. So I go down to the pub on a Friday night as usual. Though this was not long after I had actively ended the friendship with Lucinda. I see both her and Leanne at a table together having a whale of a time, laughing loudly and rather blandly trying to make me feel uncomfortable. This was blatant because I know for a fact that they had never socialized or been friendly with each other before this. They had obviously bonded over some mutual hatred of me. Me being a sensitive 18 year old did find this uncomfortable but I was determined to not let it ruin my night. So I hung out with a bunch of awesome punk mates of mine and had a great time at the other end of the pub, completely out of the view of both Leanne and Lucinda. Though I'd have to walk past the table to use the ladies and every time I did they would loudly make comments about me and laugh. 
After a couple of drinks, I was feeling brave and remembered that Lucinda was still 17 and it was 10 minutes past 9 in the evening. The pub landlord would check out the underage kids at 9, the ones he didn't like anyway. So I went to the bar and ordered a drink from the landlord and said, oh, you know Lucinda is still here and it's past 9 pm, right? He gave me a knowing look and said, ah, yes, she's still 17, isn't she? Don't worry, I'll handle it. About 10 minutes later, both Lucinda and Leanne walked past me on their way to exiting the pub with faces like thunder. Neither say a word to me, nor do I make eye contact with them. I just continue enjoying my night with my awesome friends at the pub that I love. The landlord actually passed away a few years after this, and I often tell the story when reminiscing with other friends who knew him. He was a legend. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.